Something as small as little particles and animations is what Roblox developers use to keep you addicted to their game. And in this series, I give myself some coding challenges that relate to smooth effects to enhance your games and show the code and objects needed to make them. So for the first effect that you guys helped me come up with from my community post is add a little effect when the humanoid takes damage. So basically I have this highlight in this rig here and when the humanoid takes damage it'll smoothly kind of zoom in like this or you know from this to this and zoom back out and there will also be some particles that will look something like this. And if you guys are wondering where I got the particles from, if you just search up in the first few options, and you'll find so let's see if I want to use for damage. I can't find that, but you want to use the particles, so you can have a little But if you just go through the first few options and go through packs like these, you will find some particles that you can mess around with. And so to start everything off, I have a damage folder in replicated storage with our highlights and also our particles that we will be using. So let's start scripting it. Okay, so to give you guys the basic rundown of what's going on in this script is we have a main function called on health changed and this returns another function which basically checks uh, if we took some damage, a debound so it doesn't repeat itself too many times, we are cloning highlights, tweening the highlight, adding particles to our character and playing them, waiting a little bit tweening it so we don't see the highlight anymore, waiting 0.3 seconds to make sure the particles have played and are over with, and then we are destroying them, waiting until our second tween is completed and then destroying the highlight completely, and everything resets, and down here is just some memory connection stuff and just making sure everything works. So it's not that complex of a script we have a time up here so if you wanted to change the time of the effect so maybe it lasts longer you can do that as well so if we head into our game i also real quick made this part it's not a kill brick it just does damage to your character so if you wanted this code here it is uh so basically every time we touch it which will be every one second because the debounce uh we take 25 damage so head into our game and then walk over here walk over the part and we see that there is the highlight on our character and there's also the particles which actually looks really really nice and then one more time and then we die and oh there's a <laughs> we touch it again so it plays and then we can do it again and yeah there you guys go so if you guys maybe wanted a little bit more of an effect for your particles you could change this i left this at one just so it's kind of subtle but we could change this to an extreme 10 and there will be a lot more particles <laughs> yeah, as you can see there that looks really cool but you know you guys can do whatever you want with the system and here is the full code once again if you guys want to copy the full thing Okay guys, so the next thing I'm going to make is a screen shake effect where you can choose whether you want a small screen shake just for a little subtle effect to spice up your game or you could do a huge shake, screen shake so maybe a meteor landed in your game or something along those lines. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make that. So the first thing we're going to do is insert a module script in replicated storage because we are going to make two global functions that we can call the big screen shake effect and the small one. So yeah, we're gonna use module scripts. And I will also explain everything that I do in the script when I finish it. So let's get right into it. Okay. 
Okay guys, so this should be the small screen shake done. And basically, we are sending in a character in a duration, and we're just checking if they are nil or non-existent. And if they are, then we're stopping the script. And then here, we are getting a start time, and then we are repeating a constant shake of the camera offset. So basically, in the humanoid, we have a camera offset that we can change. You know, the offset of where the camera is relative to the character. And we are generating random numbers or offsets a lot, very often. So then it makes it seem like it's a weird shake. And then we are setting it here with the random offsets. And then we have a duration. So start time, end time. And then we are figuring out if we should stop the screen shake or not. And then at the end of it, we are setting the camera offset back to zero. So uh, it looks nice and it's resetting back to the normal one. And so making this work, we're going to insert a local script into starter character scripts, I believe, because we need to get the character. And then we're going to get the screen shake module. And then we're going to wait like three seconds and then call screen shake and call it the small one. I will uh, make the bigger one in just a second. And then we're going to put in script parent because this is in starter character scripts. And we're going to send in a duration of maybe three seconds will work. Go back into our game, wait three seconds, and there should be a little subtle effect. As you can see here, it's kind of a just a small little screen shake and then it goes away. So now on to making the bigger shake, we can just copy this whole line of code, duplicate it, and then we can call like big shake. <laughs> it's kind of a weird name. You guys can name it whatever you want, but we're just going to call it big shake. And then for these numbers, I believe I'm going to change this to a hundred. So you can configure these values if you guys want, but you can copy mine. So this is going to be a hundred and I think I've done this before. I'm going to set this to 500, I believe. Okay. 500. And then we can call the new function, go back into it and it will be a much more distorted shake as you can see here. And then it stops. Okay, so the next effect I'm going to make is a type of aura because that's what you guys requested. So here I have two orbs and they both have trails in, oh, maybe not, or they're just disabled or something, but they have trails in them. And basically each of these orbs, they are going to rotate around the character. So I thought this would be a cool thing we could do for a type of aura. It's an electric kind of thing so we're going to try it out again if you think if you just search up lightning in the toolbox you will see like the first thing lightning particles it's this is literally the same thing with different sizes uh and color so we can start figuring out how to make it oh and by the way guys i removed the trail ID texture ID because there was a texture that made it look small because I was trying to figure out some electric stuff But here are the trails again And you guys can configure whatever you guys would like It's just a sphere with particles a trail if you guys want the trail Properties here they are and yeah now we can start getting into the scripting Okay guys, so here is our script done. For the orbs, I decided to clone them on the server and set the network owner of the orbs to the player so it'll make it harder for people to exploit and stuff like that. 
and in here we are anchoring the orbs on the client and some settings and then in here inside of render step that runs every frame i is basically kind of like a counter and we are doing some math here and figuring out two alphas for our two parts so the first orb will be on you know rotating on one side of the character if that makes any sense and then for alpha 2 uh, we are setting orb 2 to the alpha 2 variable and this is just alpha 1 but we are offsetting it by 180 degrees like I have here so it's basically on the other side of the character so when we run this you see we now have these two orbs kind of around our character and when we walk you can see they are moving with us and it's kind of like a cool effect now to make this even cooler if you guys really wanted to they there is a distance and a cycle duration i put in here so the smaller the cycle duration put in one the faster it'll go around my character so as you can see here it's now going faster on my character and it may look cooler to you guys maybe not you guys can do whatever you want with it and there's also distance so if we put in you know three it'll be really close to the character as you can see here so it's pretty customizable with what you can do with the orbs and how it functions and stuff like that so another thing we could do to make it even cooler is we could to make an actual aura we could add particles to our character so i could copy the orb where okay the orb particles here everything here and i could put it in my character's humanoid root part and then we would have to change the size something a little bit bigger maybe something like this you have to around with the particle you know, stuff and this well, it doesn't look too bad, but you know, you can customize with the particles and add particles to your character to make it more of an aura. And this actually looks really cool. And I know I kind of already touched up on this, but if you guys want to change the trail of, or the, you know, I'm sorry, the texture of the trail, you guys can do that because it's just the regular Roblox trail. You could make it like an electricity kind of trail if you guys have that, but I don't have any textures to change it to. So yeah, here is our final kind of aura that you guys can mess around with and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace